the historic Old West, the superstars of monster truck racing, about to make some new history. The TNT Monsters invade the Tingley Coliseum in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And you're going to see all the action next, right here on Tough Tracks. with Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman in a historic, unique, and beautiful setting. Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're looking at some scenes from the old town area of Albuquerque where the TNT monster trucks came to town to do battle in the Dingley Coliseum. And they ran into some of the greatest monster truck racing fans in the world turning out in force sell out crowds two consecutive weeks in the Tingley Coliseum. And they love the Grave Digger, Bigfoot, and the other trucks in competition at Tingley Coliseum. Now, last week, the first ever running of the TNT Monster Truck in Albuquerque saw Bigfoot 8 dominate the competition. Army Armstrong is standing by with the pilot of Bigfoot 8, Andy Bragg. Well, for the first time, the monster trucks went west. Albuquerque, New Mexico, the winner came out of that pile, that street fight, a familiar name. Bigfoot with Andy Brass at the helm. And Andy, a lot of people are saying you completely got this field covered for 1990. That's right. The Ford Bigfoot's been running real well for us. This new chassis has been re working real well. And as long as I think I can keep a good level head on my shoulders, we'll be doing real good with the truck. A lot of people say you have an unfair advantage with a new chassis, but laying all the cards on the table, you were running the smallest engine out here last week. The chassis is the edge. That's right. You know, we have designed this new chassis. It's been working super far, and a lot of people don't like it. You know, it's, it's real hard for them to compete with the truck. They're bouncing a lot while we're staying on the ground and, and moving. The truck, though, is it's a lot safer indoors. It's faster indoors. It's more controllable when we're running the indoor shows. So, And I like it myself. It's a lot smoother riding truck than the old trucks. It's easier on the driver. So it's, it's, it's a lot better truck. It's just a lot of the people don't like it because they can't compete with it. And right now, we had to drop down in motor size to give the guys a chance. And I feel pretty confident with it. You know, we did real well last time we was here, and I think we're going to keep doing real well. Well, last week, Andy Brass did definitely hold a hot hand as the monster trucks went west. The people behind me, they're having an opportunity during the pit party prior to the start of the night's race to come down and to meet their monster truck driver for the first time ever. The Renegade Monsters are west. Chris, you tell us what else we're going to be seeing on today's action-packed show. Thanks, Army. Coming up here on Tough Tracks, we're going to introduce you to the creator of a very unusual vehicle that travels along with all the monster trucks, that being the Beastron. We're going to tell you about its very special message that it sends to young people all across the U.S. And a little later on here on Tough Tracks, we're going to take you to the beautiful Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where you're going to see the superstars of super modified two-wheel drive truck pulling. Some of the superstars that are going to be on hand include Ken Lamont and the Midnight Express, Rick Carpenter, Sundance Kid, and Ed Atlanta's own Mike Stowe and Bad Dog is all coming up right here on Tough Track. Let's look at the Restore Automotive Products Monster Truck Point Standings coming into this race. And Bigfoot, despite starting the season late, has just about reeled in the equalizer. The Auto Value King Crunch, Carolina Crusher, and Awesome Kong round out the top five. The Grave Digger, hot start. He's been cold lately, but he's still in the top ten. Then it's USA One, Buffalo Trevor, Dave Weissdorf with a brand new nightlife, and the Outlaw Ford still holding on to that number ten spot. Equalizer has that slim lead over Bigfoot, and there's a lot of pressure on the rookie driver, Greg Holbrook. Andy Brass has already gained a point today because he was fast qualifier. We're going to look at the bye run in the first round for Andy Brass and the Bigfoot board. Got something interesting here. You notice Bigfoot, even though they have a bye run, they still run the truck hard. Look at this. He's going right at the wall. Shuts her down. Andy Brass and the Bigfoot boys, 100 percenters. Every time they go to the line. Chris Chapman's going to talk with Andy about that bye run. Andy, for that to have been a bye run, it looked awful squirrely. Yeah, it was. You know, it was a bye run, so we wanted to try something new. And it looked like it might have worked a little bit coming us out of the hole, but it was a little, like I say, a little squirrely there at the end. What'd you try? I uh, did some stuff. Not that share it with us? No, I'm not. 
There you have it. Bigfoot's keeping all the secrets in the Ford camp. When we come back, we'll be watching No Problem Battle Tough Enough in a Ford showdown. Then Carolina Crusher meets another big Chevy, the USA One truck. Auto Value King Crunch meets Nightlife. Then Equalizer comes out against Wild Hair. And to round out the first round, Gray Vigorant playing for Keith. Then Awesome Kong does battle with Clydesdale. Tough Tracks is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of the Nintendo Entertainment System and the world's largest and most exciting library of great games, Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Everywhere the TNT monster trucks go and we trace them here on Tough Tracks, I can tell you we really enjoy ourselves, but I have some awful fond memories, I know the rest of the gang does, of Albuquerque, New Mexico, one of the most beautiful areas in the country and great monster truck fans. The drivers getting signed in, they love performing in front of these sold-out crowds going nuts in Albuquerque. As an uh, army, I don't know of any crowd, that, you know, we have a lot of crowds that are sold out, a lot of places where they're great monster fans, but these folks in Albuquerque, they just were came unglued, they were coming off the rafters. Yeah, I noticed that too, when we came in the airport, people were looking at us like, Hey, you're with the Monster Truck. Welcome to Albuquerque. It's the furthest west that the TNT Tour has been. I think that has a lot to do with it. We're glad to be out west with these folks. They really show their appreciation. And it's a win-win situation. These drivers, they want to put on a good show. TNT people want to put on a good show. And believe me, if you bought a ticket to this one, you're going to see a good show. Tough enough and no problem will get us going in first round side-by-side -side eliminations. It's a battle of Fords. Pablo Cruz out of Phoenix, Arizona. John Moore and no problem from Tennessee, LaFayette, Tennessee. John Moore in the short wheelbase, no problem, takes the win. Pablo Cruz, Phoenix base four, a little longer wheelbase. That may not be the hot handle this evening. No problem, looking good in Albuquerque. Yeah, I tell you, he has got this air figured out. Last week we were talking to a lot of drivers that had problems getting the horsepower dialed into the vehicles. Moore never had the problem. Speaking of problems, this guy had a pick of them. It's Steve Wilkie and the USA One Chevrolet. He has to go up against Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. Right out of the chute, the Chevy's hook up. Both of these drivers are, are up in the points race. Neither one is going to give an answer to the other one. And it is, you know, you can feel the tension. Look at this. Last Porter, week. Porter, a good little hole shot. If they pay him, no, I don't know. I can't tell, Scott. Right, tight battle. Now, remember last week, it was Porter losing in the first round, but coming back to make it to the finals, he's going to have to get in on the fast loser rule again this week because Wilkie gets the victory in USA 1. Yeah, but look at a shutout on this race. You talk about some heads-up driving. Porter has to bail out to the left when he hits the finish line. Wilkie knows to spread out the building. Pedal to the metal. Here's Chris with Steve Wilkie. Steve, you came flying out of the pit. Did you think you won or lost that one? I was on my way up to the video stand. Uh, there's a feeling you get inside when you win, and uh, I knew I had a good pass, a good straight pass, and I was in the throttle. Uh, it was really close, but I was going to see it for myself, and uh, they came out and, and told me that uh, I had won. That's, that was my gut feeling. So you thought you had it? Yeah, it's a feeling, Chris. You know, you, you really, sometimes it comes down to inches, but you know inside. Do you have any feelings about the outcome of tonight? We're going to be out there standing on it, that's all I can tell you. Good luck. Thanks. Hey, Scott, he talked about that being a straight run. That was a wrong feeling. It looked awfully crooked to me. Yeah, that reference to the video stand, though, was that apparently he had the feeling they were going to call him a loser, and he was going to go up and dispute it. Well, the people that follow the circuit, they know that every run is videotaped. They can go back and replay it. The driver has that option. They did not need to pick up the option that time, but it was there for him, and he needed to. Auto Value hooked up with this GMC out of Texas. He's going to be going against one of the strongest, I would say the strongest, privateer in the sport out of Nebraska. Dave Wysorek's brand new nightlife. All new truck. This is just the second week out for it. He built it from the ground up. He painted it. He drives it. His family comes along with him, and they're a neat, neat story. They go up against Auto Value sponsor King Crunch with Scott Stevens out of Woodlands, Texas. These guys really do a lot to help each other during the week. However, when they go into the arena, they put on the war paint, and it is a literally battle to go to this next round. No love lost right now. Stevens, whole shot. special let's watch it again nightlife gets the win king crutch takes out the pole that lines up the finish line the left side of the left lane is collapsing on these fellas you remember the previous run crusher had the same thing happening but right now full pedal to bring that truck around he didn't jump the line 
now you let just beat him. Here's Chris Chapman with Scott Stevens. Scott, a very, very close race between you and Dave Wazor. Yeah, it was pretty close. I thought I left really uh, good on the line, but I had a lot of problems at the finish line, so I was just glad to save the truck. What happened? Uh, I think we got this chassis a little tight tonight. We you know, just experimenting all weekend, and last night we did a right choice, and tonight we went backwards. So what are you going to do with the King Crunch machine now? Well, if we get to come back, we're going to loosen it back up and go with the setup we had last night. Good luck. Thank you. the TNT Monster Truck Challenge in a nutshell. The defending world champion Equalizer got a little bit of a late start. Gravedigger looks best for the first week or two, but then Equalizer took over. David Morris left the team, and since then Equalizer has struggled. Bigfoot's been reeling him in, and now Greg Holbrook is precariously trying to hold on to a slim point lead. He needs a win over Wild Hair here. Well, Holbrook, being a rookie driver, is doing what you have to do. He's just been in time in the seat, and Gary Cook will not pressure this young man. He believes in him. He said he's going to come around. He'll come around at his tempo, but when he does come around, he'll be on top of this thing. But who does he draw? The wild hair, Starvin Marvin. And hey, the kid is showing his muscle here. Look at him. You're absolutely right. Gary Cook has given him time. But if it takes him too long, he may be looking at nothing but the tailgate of Bigfoot, as theoretically the foot could take the point lead tonight. However, Equalizer gets a big win here. Let's see what the kid thinks. Here's Army. Well, Greg, Greg Holbrook, I don't believe there's anything in this sport such as beginner's luck. You either have it or you don't. And I believe you're proving right now, son, you definitely have the ability to drive one of these monster trucks. I'm just getting better with every round, learning from every trip. It's just trucks working real well. Gary's got it set up good. It's just all you got to do is just get in there and drive. You're getting a lot of confidence, aren't you? You're getting a lot of confidence in your interviews and in driving the truck. You just keep up the good work. We're going to be keeping an eye on you. Good luck in that next round. Okay, thank you, Army. Greg Holbrook in the World Championship truck. Here's the most popular monster truck in the world, but it is one that is just continuing to have problems. Dennis Anderson is just on a terrible streak of luck with the Grave Digger. He is at the line, and Army, he is on the five-minute clock. They're trying to get the transmission line fixed. It busted on him, started pouring transmission fluid out. He's getting a lot of help, but the question is, can he make it to the line to race Jesse Berge and playing for keeps? Well, he only has five minutes to do that. Berge says patiently on the line. You see Berge in the background. When he went to the starting line, the clock started track officials right there the problem is there's a transmission line that leaked the crew members probably the engine they spinning it over yeah he's going to make it all right Albuquerque. boy the roof on Dingley coliseum just raised about three feet and then set back down as the grave digger fired it up and the fans go bananas and i'm going to tell you i don't think jesse Berkey's real happy but he's going to have to go ahead and run against the Grave Digger right here. And bergie has got a truck that's broken, so Dennis Anderson should have a pretty easy time if the Digger will run. Well, we were talking earlier about how super these fans are out here. They all want to see the Grave Digger. They've seen it on TV and everything. This will be the first time they get a chance to watch it crash the go. Not a real attack run, but he'll be back. He does take Oh, no, here we got another problem. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. They're having trouble shutting them down in this building all of a sudden, Scott. Anderson gets the win over a broken playing for keeps and Jesse Berge. Berge thought he might get an easy win and a few points, but Digger was able to get it started just before the five-minute mark was up, and he gets the win. Army Armstrong with Dennis Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, you talk about drama. You can't get any more dramatic than this. Dennis, what happened on the starting line? We blew a transmission line coming through the door, Army, when I got ready to back over the hill. I lost all my transmission pressure. We had to run, fix the line. Fill it back over the fluid, but we made it. Both red lights stayed on the truck. That was an indication to me. There no doubt in your mind you were going to make it to that round. Is that the way it is? Yeah, well, you know, uh, Jesse, he was hurt. I knew that I knew that if I could get the truck running any kind of way, I had a win going for me. And the truck wasn't hurt. You know, I knew it just blew the line off. That's something minor. So we got her fixed up and we're ready to go. Tip of the hat to his traveling buddy, Gary Porter, the Carolina Crush, who really hustled out there to help him. 
You know, these guys tend to be at war with each other all the time, but Porter and Anderson have gotten to where they travel a lot together, and the Crusher and the Gravedigger, kind of independent teams. You talked about privateers. These guys do their own thing, and they kind of help each other out. They're traveling buddies. Well, you know, they're kind of like the NASCAR guys. You go from one race to the other, you jump in a caravan, and you go with the guys. When you get to the racetrack, it's war. Speaking of war, look at this one. Live stand and awesome car. It'll be the Texas Chevrolet. Steve Kane's Whoa. awesome car. the first round. We'll be coming back to Albuquerque for more monster truck action a little later. But in just a minute, it's super modified two-wheel drive truck pulling from Atlanta. Tough tracks in the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Checking out the skyline of Atlanta, Georgia. We're in the Omni for super modified two-wheel drive truck pulling. Certainly one of the most popular classes in the sport and one of the most popular guys in this town from just up the road in Warrington, Georgia, former national champion Mike Stowe getting that bad dog board ready to do battle. First up, though, we're going to see Mark Hare bring the Jack Daniels Chevrolet out. You know, we were talking a moment ago, we used to reference the NASCAR. We can relate this team to NASCAR, too. It's a Humco chassis coming out of Ohio, and they're kind of like the Hendricks operation in NASCAR. They run three complete trucks on the circuit trying to win this national championship. This truck runs around the sponsorship of Jack Daniels and Joey, driven great by Mark Hare, and he's going to be way shy tonight in Atlanta. That's the first distance, though, 157.46 for Mark Hare and the Jack Daniels Chevrolet. Mark obviously not happy with that. Kenny Lamont strapping on the gear. He'll be hopping into the Plano Toolbox's Midnight Express to make his attempt as we look at the replay for J.D. Well, you know, the weight, yeah, I was the weight box is coming up on him. He just missed the handling characteristics of the vehicle. Now, there's the man that actually built the frame we saw run a minute ago. He'll be making some changes. You can bet that Ken Lamont, as his crew chief, walks right in front of the camera. Lamont's on one end trying to pull 180 feet to the other end. That would be a full pull. Lamont, you can see him strapped in the Plano Toolboxes Midnight Express, one of the most popular vehicles in all of pulling, ready to take it down in front of the crowd of Atlanta Domini. You know, this two-wheel drive super class has to be one of the most popular classes we have. These drivers, they have following people really down by Ken Lamont at 168.1. Chris Chapman is standing by with the crew chief, Tom Merck. Tom, is that more in line to what you're used to seeing Ken Lamont and then uh, Fred do? That's right. That's what we like to see. We like to see it roll out, hook to the ground, pick the front end, and go hard. Made a good pass there. I think it should be good enough to win this one. It's a pretty good run. I had a good shot. It's a real touchy track. You really got to be careful on that cross. You know, I went to lead like, when I go in lead 10, 12 feet. I'm not, yeah, I believe that's what we're looking at right now. But there's a lot of guys, as soon as you made your run, everybody started scrambling around, moving their weights around behind you. They're watching you. Now they're coming after you. I hope I just screwed up their program real good. <laughs> Get them up. Army, what about moving the weight around? Well, what it is. The weight is so important. Balance is what this sport is all about. On the front of each vehicle, you see a weight box. They have to weigh 6,200 pounds, but where do you put the weight? That's what the secrets are all about. The teammate of Jack Daniel, Phil Humphrey, and Spike. A moment ago, he told you he's the man who's involved in three trucks. He looks white to me on the front, but a good distance. 168 when he had the better. Not going to be there. He goes to 157. He didn't seem to pick anything up from the previous run, but they have another truck, Sundance Kid. Maybe he'll learn about it. Remember, Jack Daniels stayed heavy on the nose. Spike was light on the front end. Sundance Kid should be just right if everything goes down properly. Wayne Roush getting ready to pull. Army's got Bill Humphrey. Well, Bill Humphrey, you guys came into this Atlantic show with three vehicles. The first one came out was too heavy. You come out and look a little bit light. Is the third one going to be just right? We got three different combinations. We're gonna try three different things. We run this truck a higher gear, a little lighter. Mark's tried a lower gear and heavier on the front, trying to drive it farther. Ray's just gonna blast it. 
That's the strategy from Bill Humphrey and the rest of his team. Now Wayne Rouse and the unique looking yellow Model D beautiful truck and one of the greats in the sport. Yeah, this Wayne Rouse has been one of the most popular drivers in the sport, and I was just thinking, it's been quite a while since we've seen him on tough track with him. He's staying up in the points, but he's not always around the top five. He's doing a lot of research and development this year, relies on the Chrysler engine to make the horsepower, fiberglass rims of the 23 Ford, Mr. Concentration, Mr. Nice Guy, Wayne Rouse out of Dublin, Ohio, working at right side of the track, and he is really light, but look at this. He's got it. That line was Kenny Lamont pass. Easily passed it. The new leader, Wayne Rouse, the yellow Model T at 173.76. So Wayne Rouse and the yellow Model T now at the top of the heat as Mike Stowe getting that bad dog board ready. Wayne Rouse is run. May make Mike rethink the things. He's checking the track out right now, and he's going to decide where he wants to position that sled to get ready to go after the new lead distance set down by Wayne Roush in the yellow Model T. Back to the pulling a little bit later, but when we come back, Bigfoot and no problem, it's a Ford battle in Albuquerque. In Tough tracks in the TNT Monster Truck Challenge back in Albuquerque, New Mexico's Tingley Coliseum. Getting ready for the round of eight. The quarterfinals are set to do battle in the Coliseum. Chris Chapman is going to let us know who's racing who. Really no big surprises as we head into quarterfinal competition. It's going to be our fast qualifier, Bigfoot, taking on John Moore and his Ford Bronco, no problem, in the first pairing. And our next pairing plays is USA 1 against Nightlife, running very strong here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Our fast loser from first round competition, King Crunch, coming back to face the equalizer. That should be a very interesting matchup, one you're going to want to be sure and watch. And rounding out the quarterfinal competition is Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger and Awesome Pong. Coming up right here. But first, it's that advertised Ford Showdown. Bigfoot number eight and Andy Brass from St. Louis. The no problem Ford Bronco, John Moore out of Lafayette, Tennessee. Yo, know, you're looking at exactly two opposite ends of the spectrum here. Big money sponsor in the blue truck. Bigfoot, Bob Chandler's operation, a class operation. The privateer out of the volunteer state of Tennessee. A husband, his wife, and their daughter. John Moore let it all hang out, just a length short of Bigfoot. Still a nice run and a strong run by John Moore, no problem. He pushed Bigfoot, watch this. Bigfoot had to really take it to the limit. Look at the shutout problem these guys are having out. Bigfoot's nose is over, barely shuts his rascal down. Here they come right at you, two big boards, and the Bigfoot board is the one that gets the job done. Chris Chapman's found John Moore in the pit. And let's go to that conversation now. With John Moore, the driver of the Ford Bronco, no problem. John, you did not lay down against Bigfoot. A very good time, 4.95. Yeah, we, I really tried off this time. I, I thought I, I really thought I could have got him this time. I don't know, a little slow there off the light. I don't, I thought I'd run him a good race. I really did. Uh, he's not unbeatable. I, maybe next time I'll get him. So John Moore at least thinks Bigfoot can be had, but so far he hasn't been able to do it. USA won now out against Nightlife. Well, a lot of guys think they can beat Bigfoot. They just need about, about four months to build a new truck. It's nothing secret what he has, but they just don't have time to build it and change these points. Speaking of changing points, Chevrolet side by side, line of hand for Wilkie. Whoa! Yeah, they're both trying to fit through that door. Fucking Broncos barely got him shut down. I thought USA One was going to launch it right through the roof of Tingley Coliseum. Watch the launch. Big time air show. TNT Air Force right there, Scott. Nightlife gets the win one more time. Dave Wysorek and that brand new Nightlife Chevrolet putting away the 1988 world champion. Here's Army and Dave. You come out here and run a real strong race. You're still right in the middle of this thing with the brand new truck. It's got to make you feel great. It does. It feels real good. I'm getting the hang of the truck better and better, and I'm getting used to backing in inside the truck. Lining up a lot straighter, and I think once I get going and get a, get the hang of the truck, I'm going to do real well. Entering the building now, the defending world champion equalizer to meet the auto value king front. Hey, you know in that interview, there's something I got to remember to ask that guy. We used to always talk about why Short hanging his head 
out the window with the new truck. He doesn't do it. He had to change his whole driving style. Back to you, Scott. King Crush, the Auto Value sponsored drive, lining up to take on the world champion Equalizer Chevrolet and the new driver, the rookie, Greg Holbrook. And anything short of an Equalizer championship here today in Albuquerque will probably put Bigfoot into that number one spot in the season points. So this is a critical race for the Equalizer. And he did not get off the line well at all. Now, Scott. Auto Value King Crunch gets the win, and that likely will cost Equalizer the World Championship points lead as Equalizer gets hung at the starting line. Scott Stevens is your winner, and he'll be moving in to the round of four. As you look at it one more time, Army catching up with Scott Stevens. Scott Stevens, the technicality got you back in the middle of this thing. And there was a lot of question on the first round about you jumping the light. Son, it looks to me like you're just cutting a pro start light in a drag strip. You are cutting that light right down to the nearest thousands of a second. All right, Army. Uh, everybody's getting so close now, and that's all we practice on all week at home is on our starts. And it's paid off last week, and this week, the starts is where we're winning the races. When you came on this end of the track, I've been around you a lot of years. I've never seen you this pumped up. Is this going to be the night you get a hold of Bigfoot? Uh, Actually, the things are working just like we wanted. We didn't qualify where we wanted, but we, did, we wanted some way to get away from Bigfoot. And coming back as a fast loser was, was a great way to be away from him until the final. But we got Awesome Kong probably in the next round, him or Digger, and they're both going to be tough trucks. We'll see you in that next round. Thank you, Army. Well, Scott Stevens teased the matchup for us. Grave Digger is out to take on Awesome Kong. Dennis Anderson from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, and the Grave Digger Panel Wagon 1950 Chevy version takes on Awesome Kong, that modified Chevrolet truck out of Texas, Colleen, Texas, from the Jeff Dane stable. It's Steve Kane. Everybody knows the story. When you see both of those red lights on the front of the Grave Digger, he's got it on 100% kill. That's what it's going to take to get past this section. Boy, the crap. You know, we were talking, keep talking about this crap. These people are pumped. You can feel the electricity as both of these guys go to the line, waiting for a green light. Texas versus North Carolina. Texas, hold shot. Well, there's nothing. Digger can't even get off the line. Awesome Kong, a wild run. He didn't know Digger wasn't with him and came let it all hang out. But Grave Digger's mechanical problems continue, and Dennis Anderson is left at the starting line. The victory going to Awesome Kong. That brings us to this week's Nintendo Power Play. This week on the Power Play, it's the powerful leap of Steve Kane and Awesome Kong. Yes, indeed. Awesome Kong, the powerful leap at Albuquerque Singley Coliseum. We'll get one more look at it on the Nintendo Power Play. Scott, the sport's been around long enough now for everybody to have a reputation. This is one of the bad boys right this here. Power Play is brought to you by Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. The loader is hooked and pulling out Dennis Anderson's grave digger. The digger is done for the night, and once again, it's transmission problems. All the fluid is on the floor of the Coliseum. Digger goes off on the hook. Army Armstrong is going to work his way over and talk to the winner of that last round of competition, the guy who gets the victory over the grave digger, Steve Kane the driver of the awesome Kong Chevrolet. Here's Army right this now. This is the first time that the monster trucks have been this far west, and they're definitely getting their money's worth. Speaking of the money's worth, we're down to a four-car shootout, a four-truck shootout, and you're going to be one of the four. It looks like you and Scott Stevens are going after each other. Well, when you run Scott Stevens, you know, you got to go out there and you got to run hard, because I know he's going to, so There's, it's going to be a heck of a race. You got any problems, or do you think you can beat him, or is he, you know, what, what's, what's going through your mind right now? Oh, I believe I can beat him. I beat him before, you know. I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to run that truck as hard as he'll go. Always the most excitement you can have in one night is at a TNT event. Not just here on Tough Track, but go to the arenas and watch the great action live. The Monsters are coming to Pueblo, Colorado, June the 8th and 9th. And on the figure eight course at Louisville Motor Speedway, June 9th and 10th. Then they head to Richmond International Raceway, June 15th and 16th. They'll round it out in Bowling Green, Ohio in the month of June.
cut tracks and two-wheel drive super modified truck pulling from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia on the GMT All-American Pulling Series. The yellow Model T of Wayne Rouse leading over Ken Lamont's Midnight Express and Bill Humphrey's Spike. But plenty of top dogs still to come, including the bad dog, Mike Stowe, the hometown boy out of Warrington, Georgia. And Mike wants to take the lead bad. He wants to take the lead bad. He's got an advantage. He knows the play. Rouse is about to play five feet to go on the lead. Look at this run. You talk about perfect look. Mike oh. Stowe has the edge. Not a full pull, but just barely short. 177.49. The bad dog has set it up to the number one spot so far in Atlanta. John Heilman will be coming out next in the Golden Thunder for Thunderbird. He's going to have to beat a whale on a pull. That pull came from Mike Stowe and Army's with Mike right now. Mike Stowe, you've been playing in this dirt ever since you were a kid. You know how to make the horsepower sick here, don't you? Well, the M34 is working pretty good, Army. Uh, they at one point, I thought I might have been a little light then, but it nosed over, and I didn't have to use the brake but once, and it just kind of had a little fulcrum advantage right there at the end. I think that's what got me across the line. We got four more of these bad boys coming at you. Can you hold on to win this thing? I don't know, boy. I guarantee your line's going to be charging hard, except as there is. Of course, the rest of these guys ain't going to cut nobody no slack. The very versatile John Heilman's going to be next up. The Golden Thunder for Thunderbird. Now, Heilman is actually having a better year running his modified tractor, Ohio Gold. He's got a shot to win the points championship on the Winter Series there. He's been running well in the Thunderbird, just not quite as dominant as he's been in the modified tractor. I think it's just like any kind of race, and you can only be at one place at one time. He has to put a lot of time and energy and effort into the modified tractor. He doesn't get to put that much time in on this vehicle. Like you say, a good run. Not a great run. He'll finish the top ten, pick him up some bucks with this vehicle. But the lead distance still belongs to Mike Stowe and the Bad Dog Ford at 177 and change on this 180-foot track. There's the defending champion in this class, Ray Carpenter, the Sundance Kid. Carpenter's brother, Rick, will run it in just a minute. But and, here, now, and here comes the guy that everybody is afraid of in this class. Jim Lyons bringing out stitches. He's in the GMC out of Louisville, Kentucky, and he's ready to see if he can take it out of here. He's a chassis builder. He's an engine builder. He is an ace driver. I want you to listen to the engine. He's just like a kamikaze pilot. When, at the 20-foot mark, I guarantee you he'll have it on kill. He'll either go into the lead or hurt something. All right, as they pull, they're going to tighten him up, take the slack out. Then Army and I and you at home, we're going to listen real close to this engine of Jim Lyons and Stitches. the job done he takes it out now carpenter knows he's got work cut out for him as rick carpenter is about to come out but first army's going to talk with lions about a full pull and the lead in atlanta Jim Lyons, full pull. but the baddest of the bad is going to be coming after you right now the sundance kid he's the only one left well you know we've been there and we you know we won and we lost so i'm going to take it out around come but i feel good about the run we had a great run it was perfect Thanks to Reed Cam and Pro Chop, we've done a super job. The Sundance Kid was the truck to win it all in 1989, the national champion on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. Now, a new driver in it, Rick Carpenter, brother of last year's champ, Ray. Like you said, last year, this was a truck that only made one change. It was in the seat, the driver's seat. Let's see if it will make that much of a difference. Lions on top. short the Sundance kid not able to force a pull off with Jim Lyons and the Louisville Kentucky puller will get the win over Carpenter and the Sundance kid the final standings from Atlanta stitches with the win bad dog the Ford Mike still holding on for second Sundance is third then Wayne Roush in the yellow Model T fourth and Ken Lamont who's had a rough winner gets him a solid top five in the Midnight Express
in Albuquerque were getting ready for those semifinals of the monster truck action, and the kids especially, but the fans in general, being entertained by an appearance from the Beastron, a transforming tank into a robot. Chris Chapman spent some time with the creator of this creation, Willie Towns. I'm with Willie Towns, the owner-creator of the 23,000-pound attraction of most monster truck shows, that being the Beastron. Willie, where did you come up with such an idea? Uh, TNT gave me a call one day. They wanted something to attract people to the shows and something to fight crime and drugs. So that's what we came up with. Now you have a very special message behind the Beast Drum Machine, don't you? Can you share that with us? Yeah, crushing drugs and crushing crime and teaching the kid if they have any dreams that if they work hard enough for them, they can make them come true. Do you feel like that the kids really relate to Beast Drum's message? Yeah, so far we've been getting a real good reaction from all the kids. They love it. And do you plan on taking Beast Run around the country with the rest of the Monster Truck Show? Yep, sure do. It's booked solid right now. We're going to keep on booking it. The message also being carried by the TNT Monster Trucks. All of them carrying that banner, just say no to drugs on their trucks. with the semi-final pairing. If you like monster truck racing and you like very close monster truck racing, then you don't want to miss this semi-final round. Look at this. It's going to be Andy Brass and the Bigfoot Machine going head-to-head -head against Dave Wysorek in Nightlife. We spoke with Dave earlier. If you think he can beat him, we're going to find out in just a minute. Rounding out the semifinals, it's going to be a very strong running Scott Stevens and King Crunch and the awesome Kong machine driven by Steve Kane. It's all coming up next here on Tough Track. Bigfoot getting ready to do battle with nightlife. Now, earlier, you heard Andy Brass say he's got a secret plan out here. It looks like that Bigfoot is rolling over the hill very easily, then hammering the throttle. We asked A.Y. Sorek just a moment ago if he thinks that's true. I think it might be. I think he's taking a little bit soft off the hill and, and taking off on the downside, which is really putting his time to real fast. So that's kind of the strategy I've been using all night, and maybe it'll work out for the best. I hope it'll work out better for me. Dave Wysorek in that brand new nightlife. Maybe he's got Bigfoot's number. Nobody's had it in recent weeks. We'll find out right here. It's the semifinals. The winner goes to the Monsters man. Scott's going to be Ford Chevrolet. The people on their feet. We'll give the winner here. Goes to the finals. Roll on the start line. Gas is on the start line. Punch it at the jump. What's going to be the right combination? Everybody's watching Brass as he goes into the lane. Rolls up. Stages that big Ford. The Chevrolet's ready to go. We look for a green light in Albuquerque. TMT starter, Tracy Smart, giving them both a look, making them wait a little bit at the line. Now he's checking. Watch for the green. There they go. Big foot in nightlight. Both of them get it on the start line. Grand. Big oh, foot. Again. All right, Scott, they're scaring me to death on this end of the track. Barely getting it stopped. Bob Chandler's revolutionary big foot number eight gets the victory, and he really picked him up and laid him down. And again, you can tell how radical that suspension is by the way he stopped. The suspension, the body really just seems to lay down on the suspension when he puts those brakes you on. You have a preference as far as which truck you want to run. Awesome Kong, and you put on some battles. But this King Crunch truck has been bad battling you a whole lot. Do you have a preference? Yeah, I like to run Kong, you know. I've been been with Kong a lot, you know. I like to see uh, Crunch get knocked out early, you know, get the points down on him. Uh, from what I can understand right now, we're leading in the points, so I'm trying to keep the other guys down as far as we can. Boy, you got that one right. Not a whole bunch of love loss right there between Andy Brass and Bigfoot and the auto value king crunch of Scott Stevens. Stevens about to take on Awesome Kong. But before we get to that race, let's have a little fun because it is time for the Crunch of the Week. Hold on to your seats for the amazing Crunch of the Week, brought to you by Micro Machines, the number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. The Crunch of the Week takes us back to Memphis, Tennessee. A few months ago, Scott Stevens is King Crunch. And watch the wheels tuck in, and this thing virtually disintegrated. Just a horrific run for Scott Stevens, and you can see not much left in front of the driver's portion. Watching it from inside with Scott Stevens, you get a real feel for what it's like to be on the Crunch of the Week. Scott says, I'm okay up here, but the truck was not. 
Well, it's a lot better now for the Auto Value King Crunch. They've got it put back together, running strong. He lost in the first round, but came back as the fast loser. And now we'll try to knock Awesome Kong off for a shot at Bigfoot in the Monster Smash Fight. We're keeping an eye on two people right now. We're watching the Auto Value GMC of Stevens, but also Kevin Ford, his crew chief, is giving him information. And, and I'm watching Kevin. He's constantly talking to Scott. It's amazing what's going on right now. They definitely are doing it. They're going to pull everything they can out of this hand to go against Bigfoot in the final. They want Bigfoot in the worst way. But in order to get to that floor, they got to get past the second Chevrolet. They're going to be there, Scott. Man, oh, man, by inches. It is Scott Stevens. You can see in the cab how excited he is. He knows he got the win. It wasn't by much, but just enough. Watch a driver reaction when he comes down into this uh, shutoff area. Look at it from the end zone and watch how close these two trucks came to colliding. But the winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch. Well, right now we've got a scoop. We just found out that you guys are not going to be able to come back and go 100%. Is that the word, Scott? Yeah, Army. It's, you know, we hate to say it, but, you know, Auto Value Parts Store Special, we're racing for the world championship. So we're going to come back to the final round for the points. But the neutral suspension we tried is working great. But uh, all the four link bars broke off in that uh, semifinal round against Austin. So. You know, we're just going to have to come back and go easy just to get the points. Kevin, you guys have been thrashing all year long to get the right combination. It looked like the combination is there. Is this going to take any of the intensity away from you fellas, or do you still believe you can win this world championship? No, we can still do it. This is just a minor setback right now. Once we get this problem fixed, we're going to come back at it. said before the break that his truck is broken and he's just going to the finals for points. A moment ago, Chris Chapman talked to a skeptical Andy Brass as he prepared to bring Bigfoot into Dingley Coliseum. Andy Brass, I don't know if this is good news or bad news for you. Scott Stevens, driver of King Crunch, it looks like he's broken the suspension and the four links underneath. He's not going to be able to run as good as he normally would. Well, I, I ain't got time to go in and look at his truck, but this could be one of Scott's tricks. You know, Scott's good for this kind of stuff, telling people he's broke. And then the other guy going in not running hard because Scott and I have both had some pretty good times tonight and that's all it's going to take is for me to slack off a little bit thinking he's busted, but I'm going to go out and run as hard as I can. coming out there for points. So Army, why is he messing around? Why won't he get to the line? The same reason you call timeout in a basketball game. You want Andy Brass to think about what he's going to do. He's trying to chill him out. Like Brass has been around a long time. Let's listen to the conversation. These two guys just don't like each other is the bottom line here. And that conversation with King Crunch is probably just let's keep messing with Andy Brass. Be cool. Bigfoot's going to hammer it, though. You can be sure of that. The, the radio conversation you hear is from the King Crunch truck. Bigfoot's just going to have one conversation. That's with the throttle, and it's going to be full tilt. All right, now Andy stays. Andy Brass, I don't think you're going to rattle this guy. If he had been born 150 years ago, he'd have been a gunfighter. He's that cool, calm, collective. Stevens will not rattle the Bigfoot driver tonight, I don't believe. And the Bigfoot ain't really would like to hammer the Auto Value King Crunch. Stevens has really been complaining about the truck. The big boy got his shoulder stuck right there. Oh, look out, Andy! Hey, hello, Albuquerque! He took nothing off and almost joined him in the front row. Wow, we, but Andy Brass has done it, and he is taking over the season point lead in that Bigfoot board. Bigfoot goes to the point lead with a 319 equalized right behind him at an 08. Texas Team Crunch sets number three. Awesome Kong also from Texas number four in the Carolina Crush in the top five. Grave Digger stays six. USA 17. Buffalo Trimmer, Nightlife, and the Outlaw. Let's go to Scott for a wrap-up. 
That wraps up an awesome two weeks of action with the TNT Monster Truck Challenge in the Tingley Coliseum at Albuquerque, New Mexico. Lots of stories, but the big one was Bigfoot. He takes over the points lead with two big wins, but can he hold it? Can he make it three in a row? If he does, it'll be on the wildest course ever. Next week, here on Tough Tracks, for the first time ever in Dallas, Texas, three monster trucks at a time, side by side. You can't miss it next week here on Tough Tracks.